Likutei Torah Daf Chaf begins with a small mimer that starts with a vav ve'inyan memeshresechem taviulechem because it's a continuation of the mamar man shvuas. This also is a shvuas dika mimer. It's a continuation of the previous mamar also about shvuas. So this is the last mimer about shvuas in Likutei Torah. So the Alter Rebbe says, "Ve'inyan memeshvaseichem tavio lechem tnufa shtayim." That from the places where you live, where you dwell, that's pasha pshat. The word memeshvaseichem, where you live. And Chazal say that's coming to say Dafka from Eretz Yisrael that from the land of Israel Taviu Lechem Tnufa Shtaim you bring the wheat to be able to bring the Shtei Halechem that of course on Shavuos that was supposed to bring Shtei Halechem into the base of Megdash and wave them with the Shlomim so the pasuk is saying that you have to bring this Shtei Halechem you have to bring this Lechem Tnufa this bread that you wave from Eretz Yisrael but the Alter Rebbe now explains how this pasuk is nege every single day it's relevant to every day's avodah. Hashem, he says that what does it mean the deeper meaning of where you sit that's the Indian of Kriyashma Kriyashma is called Yeshiva not just because we sit during the Shema but he's going to explain in a second why and Kriyashma is the main focal point of all of Tefillah and Mimeshveisechem Tavio Lechem Tnufa, the deeper meaning is that Dafka through the Avoid of Kriyashma does one draw down from above, as we're going to learn why, which is the union of the Tshdeya Lechem, that the, which is a remez to the Gilui, the revelation from above that one draws down through the Meshveisechem through the Avoid of Kriyashma. Because the focal point of Davening is to come to a state where one is Moisur Nefesh Be'echad, where one allows one's soul to be absorbed within God's unity. That's the focal point of Davening and Kriyashma, which are the Kavod. One of that is to be Moisur Nefesh Be'echad. And the two brachas, the Birchas Kriyashma before that are just a achana, a preparation for Kriyashma. And the Shmoina Esrei after the Shema is just drawing down through the 18 brachas, drawing down into the world what one aroused through Kriyashma. But the Tavi Lechem Tnufa, to be able to get the Lechem Tnufa, to be able to arouse the, that day's revelation is Dafka through Kriyashma, Mimoshve Seichem. The Iker is Mesiris Nefesh of Kriyashma. The, the Kriyashma. Why is is that Davka Kriyashma called Mimosh Vesechem? Says the Alter Rebbe, because Kriyashma is the Indian of Bittul Hayesh. That's something that is a Yesh Bifneatzmai becomes Batul Tashem through the Mesiris Nefesh of Kriyashma. That's the Iker of Davening. And Davka, that is Mimosh Vesechem. From that Indian of Yeshiva, that brings the revelation of Lechem Tnufa. Why is that? What's the Indian? That Davka Kriyashma, which is Mimosh Vesechem, brings that Lechem Tnufa, brings the revelation. The Indian explanation is because Atzmusa is Baruch, the essence of Hashem is exalted and above, above and above all the worlds. Like we say, Baruch Kedoshim Yishtabach Shimcha, <clears throat> that even the creation of Kedoshim of supernal worlds is through Shimcha. What is Shimcha? That the, the creation is from a faint glimmer and ray only. That's what all the worlds, even the Kedoshim, are created from. They're only from a ray of God's light. Just like by way of example, one ray of the sun, in comparison to the sun, how nothing that is. And yet every single day we have to arouse an Or Chodosh from the emanator, from Hashem the emanator. We have to, every day has its own Or Chodosh. By the way, this mime is explained in Shosh Mitzvah's Tefillah, and there the Tzemach Tzedek says that, this, that every day is Me'en Rosh Hashanah, like a mini Rosh Hashanah. Every day you have to draw down the vitality for that day, an Or Chadash, a new light for that particular day, through the spheres, Kesar Chachma. But every day's Hamshacha, this day is not like the one that was drawn down yesterday. And every day is a new light, an Or Chadash from Hashem, through davening, and that's Dafka through Mesiris Nefesh. Why is that? Because the Mesiris Nefesh, Dafka, causes laughter and pleasure above, laughter and pleasure for God. Why? What does it mean that Dafka, Mimash down here below when you're a Yesh? And then you do Mr. Snefesh, your bottle, that causes the pleasure and laughter by God. He brings the famous marshal from the Magadim is rich. But when it comes to a, a physical king, so when you want the king to be to fulfill your wishes, you have to bring the king a gift. Or you have to do something that's going to please the king. But seemingly a king has all the money and gold and silver is not worthy at all in front of the king. Klum chasim e the king's house, is not missing anything. What could you bring to the king to bring him pleasure? So you bring him his small child, his small little baby son that he should be able to play with him. That brings the king pleasure. Or one brings a dvar chidish, something nice novel, something completely unexpected, like a talking bird, which we would call a parrot. 
says the Mizritra Magid, that's what causes the king pleasure when you have a parrot. You imagine a parrot that's able to say, long live the king, hail the king. And the king gets so much pleasure from that, that the parrot could talk. L'chayr, what's the big deal? You bring a human being could talk a lot more than the parrot. The parrot could only say two, two or three sentences. Why does that bring pleasure to the king? If he gets pleasure from talking, bring a human being. But the Vard is, the Magid is saying that a parrot, that for an animal to talk is a Chiddush. And that's what brings pleasure. On a hot day, you get pleasure from a cold drink. On a cold day, you get pleasure from a hot drink. Opposites attract. Pleasure comes from something new and different. The king doesn't need anything monetarily. What the king needs is to have this pleasure that comes from something totally new and unexpected. And therefore, that's the Vard Mimoshvei Seichem Dafka. You bring the Lechem Bibchinis Yeshiva, meaning Dafka, the worlds of Bia. The lower worlds down here below, which it's a Chiddush for us to serve Hashem, to be have Halos my Nukvin. The feminine waters that's going to arouse Hashem to reveal the new light of that day. Dafka comes from Yeshiva, Mamashvesechem, the lower worlds that we're able to be Mavatil ourselves. In other words, that, that the Malachim, that angels are Bittal, that's not a Chiddush. But that a human being could be Batal to Hashem, be Moser Nefesh, that's Chiddush, and that becomes the Mainuk in the feminine waters to arouse Hashem's revelation. Just like by the Alter Rebbe brings Beisha, Kara Moshev, which is a reference to a woman not being able to ride regularly on a horse but rather side saddle because the Torah says by a woman it says Moshev which means that she's sitting a regular sitting but the Alter Rebbe says what that comes to hint to is the idea of the, the wetness and the heat of the woman who becomes the seat of the man it's her waters and the, and the heat of her that causes the male to then give over the zera. And so to that's Mamashal, in order for Hashem to give over the Hashpa, is Mamashvei Seichem Taviu, that one is a Yesh, and then one is Mavatal the Yesh, that Dafka is Mamshech the Mind Churin, the masculine waters from Atzilus. The world where everything is Elokus and everything is one with Hashem. From there, one br- from this ch- the Chiddush of the Yeshiva, one brings the Lechem Tnufa, the bread that you wave, meaning the new light, the revelation from above that then be- goes into the Torah through the waving of the two breads and the two lambs. And then, in parentheses... There's a further explanation how Kriya Shema is even more important than Tefillah than Shemona Esrei. As we know that a person who's Terasu Menase stops learning Torah to say Kriya Shema, but does not stop to Davin. And the reason is because one has to draw down a new light, and that's through the Zivug of Abba and Ima. In other words, the new light has to come through the Ten Spheres. And for us to be able to arouse that very high level in Oil Ma'atzilus, we could only do when we're in Bria. That's what it says in, in the Priyat's Chaim from the Arizal. And the explanation is like we learned earlier, because Dafka from Bria Dafka, when one is a Yesh, and then becomes Batol, this is a novelty. That's what causes laughter, the unexpected, like the talking bird, the parrot. Mashenk and those that are in Atsilus, that that the Atsilus is Batol, that's not a novelty. And therefore, even though quantitatively, that's how the Reb explains what the Alter Reb is saying now in Lakut Yisichas Chelik Tes Parshas Eikov, the difference between Kamus Abitol and Eichus Abitol, that that quantitatively it could be that in Atzilus there's more bitul, but qualitatively the greatest bitul is that when Dafka Ayesh in Biyam in Seichem is bottle That draws down the new light, that day's light to be drawn down through Abba and Ima to come down into the world. Seichem Taviu Lechem Tnufa. And Mimer finishes that what's the meaning of the Lechem Tnufa, the bread that you wave, is the two mazolis the two hairs from Kesser that become the source of Ab and Ima, or it means the two, the two breads are Ab and Ima themselves. That you're drawing down this new revelation into the ten spheres through the pleasure that one brought. And the Shtei is the revelation of the two mazolos, the two hairs that are the source of Ab, from Atik Yoim, that are the source of Ab and Ima, or Ab and Ima themselves, meaning the re- new revelation for that day. Ad Khan is this mimer. <clears throat> now we begin Parshas Nosei. No, say Esrish B'nai Gershon V'goymer. We have to understand why Dafka by B'nai Gershon. <clears throat> Out of all the families of Levi, Levi Dafka by them says Gam Haim. No, say Esrish B'nai Gershon Gam Haim. Also, why Dafka by B'nai Gershon it says Al Pi Arnu Van of Tia Kol Avedas B'nai Gershuni that uh, through the mouth, through Aaron and his sons will all the 
avoid of the family of, the, of Bnei Gershuni would be, but it doesn't say something similar like that when it comes to Kahasu Murari. In order to answer these questions, we have to first understand in general what's the whole idea of the sojourn of the Jewish people and the Mishkan in the desert. What's the deeper meaning of the Jewish people journeying throughout the desert? Of course, Pasha Pshat is that it was a punishment. But the Alter Rebbe says the deeper reason that Jews had to spend 39 years in the desert with the Mishkan and its vessels was to subjugate all the Koyach of Yenika Sachitzoinim, the other side, because the Shoirish, the root of the Yenik of the nursing of the other side, is an Indian of Midbar Dafkan, Indian of a desert, which is why a desert, nothing grows in a desert, it's just complete wasteland, because be able to, what does it mean that nothing grows in the desert? <clears throat> and the desert corresponds to these, the other side, because to give over, to make something grow, hashpa comes from Sitcha de Kedusha, from the holy side, from the, the vitality comes from Hashem, Dafka, Tzadik Hashem, meaning that Hashem is the one that's Mashpia and the Baal Tzedakah. And so too, when it comes to, in the side of holiness, Bechlal, it, it's the same way. In other words, by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Chesed comes from a revelation, an outstretching of Hashem, Gud Gedal Chesed. But the rest of the side of holiness, meaning anything else that's holy, Dafka comes when we're bittle to the to Hashem stretching out to Hashem's revelation. When one is bottle, one is nullified to Hashem and becomes like nothing and zero within one's own eyes, then one gives to someone else. That's why Chesed and Sitra de Kedusha, Dafka comes from bottle. The more a person is bottle and doesn't feel himself to be in existence, then it makes sense that I want to give to somebody else. Because the other person, the Zulas, is more important than myself. Like Avram that Dafka said Anoichi offer Veefer. Therefore, he was the one that did chesed with all people. Masha'en can a person who's a yesh v'dover, a person that's their own, their own metzias and doesn't have bittel at all, wants everything for himself, and therefore is not mashpia. And therefore, the Midbar is, like the Torah says in Akiv, the Midbar has Nachosh, Saraf, Akrav, which the simple meaning means poisonous or burning fiery snakes and scorpions. But the Altarba says that Nachosh, Saraf, and Akrav are the three Klippas at Timaeus, that the desert is the source of Klippa, which is why the desert is completely a Yeshvedav or Nifrod, completely separate, seems it feels like a separate entity from God, doesn't have any Bittal, and therefore nothing grows, there's no Hashba. That's the meaning of the desert, and now we could understand the journeying of the Oren, of the Ark and the Bnei Israel in the desert was in order to subjugate the desert. And that was through the Gile Elokus that was in the Mishkan, when they carried the Mishkan throughout the desert, the Gile Elokus caused, ev- caused the Klippa, the desert to become subjugated, like it says in Tehillim, that mountains melt like wax before Hashem. And the necessity for this Hachana, for this preparation, this subjugation of the desert, of course this means, Alter Rebbe says, it means that through subjugating the desert, that made a, a subjugation of the Klippa of the whole world. The desert represents this, this Yeshus and the Klippa of the whole world. And the point of subjugating the whole world is that in order for that in the future, there could be Gile Elokus within the world, within the lowly world itself, in this world, that through first the subjugation of the source of concealment in Yeshus, meaning the desert, there could then be the revelation throughout the world, just like in Avod HaShem, you have to first Eskafia, in order to then be able to come to Tur, Ishapcha Chashuch and Aira, but without a skafia first, one can't come to Ishapcha. So, to an order for us to love it, there to be a revelation of Elokus in this lowly world that darkness should be turned to light, Mamish, has to be first through the subjugation of the desert, which is why they traveled throughout the desert. And what's going to be the revelation, Lasse Lavei, is going to be the truth, how it is Bafrat Smusi is Barach, that before God there is no concealment of God, no concealment or hiddenness at all, because before God everything is Kaloi Chashivi, everything is completely insignificant, and before God there's no difference at all between before He created the world or after the world was created, because so too now He's Echad Yachad Miyuchad, just like before the world was created, He's the only thing that exists now as well because all the creation of all created things, yesh ma'ayin, only comes from the oisius adibur, the letters of speech, the letters of divine speech, bedvar havaya shemaim nasu, bedvar havaya. And just like by way of mashal, 
when it comes to a person speaking. So imagine a couple of words that you say, how completely nothing and insignificant they are compared to you yourself. It has, and a couple of words you say are also bottle and tuffel, even the gabi your machshava. One thought you have, all the words that you could say are nothing, Lagabi the Machshava. But yet the person that you're speaking to, for that person, the words that you're saying is the only way they're getting the revelation, the communication. So when you say words, for the other person, it's a revelation. But for you, those words that you utter are completely, ins- completely insignificant, Lagabi, you yourself. So to above. The Oisya Sadiba, the letters of speech of the Asar Mamaris, Lagabi, the Nevraim, Lagabi, us, where Yesh Ma'ayan, that w- these letters are actually creating us and therefore the letters themselves are a yesh. But legabe, atzmus, they're completely nullified and they're completely insignificant. So therefore, even though through our perspective, the revelation of the divine letters makes that the world looks like it's a yesh v'dover for our eyes, our eyes perceive the world as a separate entity, but by Hashem there is no concealment and hiddenness at all, and therefore, when God's revelation, when God is going to reveal himself, the essence of godliness will be revealed in this world, then memela, there's not going to be any concealment, and there'll be a revelation also in Asiya that the flesh will see. Even with a, a, a flesh mind, will perceive how everything is Hashem, and in order to be able to have this revelation in the future, that had to first be the traveling of the Mishkan throughout the desert in order to subjugate it, to prepare the world for this revelation that's going to happen in the future. Now this was the Indian Adkan. We explained the Indian of Nesias HaMishkan, the traveling of the Mishkan B'Poyal Mamish, within space, within the world. But we know that the world is time, space, and soul, and so to now Baruch Nias B'Nefesh, within each person's individual Avedis Hashem, there's the Indian of Mishkan, within every single person, and all the details of the Mishkan, that's all within a person's soul, and so... The Alter Rebbe means to say that therefore one has to have the traveling of the Mishkan within the negativity and the Yeshus of within a person himself. You have to have the traveling of the Mishkan, so to speak, within oneself to be able to take away the darkness. As we know, V'asuli Migdash V'shechanti B'Seicham. A Chazal say, doesn't say, I will dwell in it, but rather I will dwell in them, that within every single Jew there has to be a Mishkan B'nafshay within their own soul. And that's through drawing down a revelation of Elukus in his soul through the Avedah Shebelev Zutfila, when one's heart will become pure, Lev Tahar Brale Lekim. That's what allows it to begin Gilialokus within one's soul when one's heart becomes pure. And what does it mean, heart becoming pure? It means that the heart is completely refined from anything other than God, that then once when one only has God in one's soul, then one is called a Mishkan that God could dwell within that person, the light of God could dwell within that person. Like it says, Yisa brachem es Hashem, bracha is hamshach, is the re- drawing down the revelation of Elokus in one soul. Who's able to be Yisa bracha? Neki kapai muvar levav. One who's clean of hand and a pure heart, that the heart is nothing other than Hashem in it. And through that revelation, one pushes away and subjugates all the concealment of the animal soul that's hiding and separating a person and makes the world look as if it's something other than Hashem. Why does the world look like it's something other than God? It's because of Gasus Chaymer Nafshe Bahamas, because of the coarseness of the materiality of one's animal soul. But when one's heart is pure and clear, one will be able to see with the, their mind's eye how nothing really conceals God. And just like it's above that everything is completely as if non existent, so too through one's refining of one's heart. One has this revelation of Elokus also within the concealment that the concealment itself should not conceal but rather within the concealment itself to see God and just like the traveling of the Mishkan in the in the Midbar that subjugated the desert so too within our souls now as well within Nefesh HaAdam also now to subjugate the Sahara, which is also the aspect of a desert the Indian of the Sahara is a desert because a desert is a place where nothing grows Eretz Leizrua 
Just like a desert, nothing grows. So too, the eight Sahara causes thoughts, speech, and actions, machshava, deeper, and maisa, that are not for God. That means that nothing grows. That's why the eight Sahara is called a desert. And that's why it also says about a desert, asher leyeshev adam sham, which the simple meaning is that no human being will live there, will sit there, but the deeper meaning is that adam elyon, Hashem, that's called adam, like Yecheskel says, al demus hakisei, demus kamar adam. When Yecheskel saw b'maisem recover the ten Spheres in the form of like an Adam. So, what does it mean that in the desert, Lo Yeshev Adam Sham, that Hashem doesn't sit there, Hashem doesn't dwell there? Because Dafka Vasuli Migdash for Shachanti Besechim, it has to be Dafka through Hashem only dwells in a Mishkan. And therefore, one has to subjugate the Midbar, which is the Eight Sahara, through drawing down a Lukus within one's soul. Now, meaning that the Altrib is now saying that how do you subjugate the Eight Sahara? By, by bringing a Lukus within one's soul. And this idea that drawing down a lukus in the soul is exactly what, that it, itself is what causes the Eitzar, the animals, the Nef Shabamas to go away, is explained in another place that that's the deeper meaning of what Beis Hillel says. Kala no chasuda, that what does that mean? That the Kala should be beautiful, meaning that it shouldn't be according to, the Hamshacha shouldn't be according to the Hala. The drawing down from above should not be just based on how much we uh, ascend from down here below. The opposite. Rather, the Hamshacha from above to below should come first, meaning that one should do Maisim Toivim even before one is completely done Surmira. One should already do Vaasi Toiv before one completely refined oneself and was completely Surmira. Bedakus, even the completely refining, even the small things, one shouldn't wait for, to be able to refine oneself completely before doing Vasei Toiv. The opposite, do Vasei Toiv and Memela through the Asei Toiv, that's what's going to cause the Chitzainim to fall away because a little light pushes away a lot of darkness. Ma'at or Har and that's what's going to allow a person to go away from the, from the evil, from the Ra. And so too was the traveling of the Mishkan in the desert, that all the journeys that through the drawing down of Elokus, automatically that's what caused the subjugation of the Klippus, which is the meaning of Ahi bin Soi Ha'orin, Ve'anusa Misanecha, that through bin Soi Ha'orin, the enemies run away. So to Benefesh in our soul, in Aveda, through drawing down Elokus from above to below, through Maisa HaToiv, and learning Torah, and Tfila Memela, that causes the subjugation of the Gashmias of the body and the animal soul. Now, he ne be mishkan, we now no, now that we understood that in order to take away, to, to chase away, to subjugate the negativity in our soul is through the union of Mishkan and the soul. So now the Alter Rebbe goes at length to explain what's the union in our of Mishkan, how do we make a Mishkan within our soul? So we know the Mishkan had three main components. The Mishkan was made up of three main type of things. The karshe, the kroshim, the beams, the tall wooden beams upon which the which were the foundation of the Mishkan. Then the yiriyos, the covers, the curtains, the many colored curtains that went over the kroshim, the beams. And then of course the kalim, the different vessels, the ar, the arayin, the menorah, and the mizbeach. Now, just to quickly give a preview, what the altar was going to go on to say, we know that in serving Hashem, the corresponding to in Hashem's four-letter name in an ascending way, hey vav hey then yud, we know that in Avodah there's yira tata, the lower level yira, then avas oilam. This is explained in Tanya Perak Mem, Mem Gimel. Then there's avas oilam, then there's avaraba, and then the yud is yira ilah, the higher level of yira. So the altar was going to say that that's these three bechinas that the kroshim, the beams is. Yiratatas, we're going to learn now. Then the curtains is Ahava, the different multicolored curtains are the different types of Ava Hashem. And then finally, the Kalim, the vessels, the Ark, and the Menorah, the Aron, etc., that's the Indian of Yuri Law. So, first, we have to understand what's the Indian of the Krushim of these beams. We know the Torah says, Atsi Shitim Oimdim. That what do we know about these beams? That they had to stand, Oimdim, they stood uh, vertically. But what does it mean that they're Oimdim? Just like the angels are also called Oimdim. Like it says, like Yeshaya says, Srafim Oimdim. The Srafim stand. The angels are called Oimdim. So, and like the Medrash itself compares the Atzi Shitim Oimdim to the Oimdim of the Srafim. And like we say also in Davening, Hashem Rishars of Kulam Oimdim. Berum Oilam Mashmim Biyira. That the angels are Oimdim at the height of the world and they're Mashmir with Yira, meaning that the Indian of Oimdim, we're going to learn now, is the Indian of Yira. 
והעניין הוא חזר סיין סויטה אינה מידה אלא שתיקה. That standing means silencing oneself. And the experience of silence means to completely nullify one's essence totally and completely. Meaning, how does one nullify one's atmos mikovachol? By nullifying one's will. That a person should have no will other than wanting havaya echod. Purity of heart is to will one thing that one just wants God. That's the only will, desire that a person has. Like it says, v'im cholei chafatzti. I don't want anything other than Hashem. And this idea of nullifying the will we find in Pirkei Ovis Chazal say, Batel Ritzoyincha. And this nullifying of will, why is it called Oymdim? Why is it called standing? Because when a person has Av and Dveikus to Hashem, that's called one as a Mahalich. Loving Hashem and Dveikus to Hashem, that's like traveling. Like it says by Avram, that was all about Ava, Holich v'nasoya hanegba. Ava means movement towards Hashem, means traveling. But before a person is able to travel, to move, to walk, to the love of God, one has to first stand still, meaning to, to, to silence the walking and traveling of le'umazer, meaning you have to stop work, walking towards the other side, the le'umazer, but you have to stop walking there before you could start walking and loving Hashem. And the le'umazer, what's the walking, the traveling, the being nimshach, the being drawn towards the other side, that's called walking to the ritzay nazares, to the foreign wills and desires that a person wants and has a desire for things, strange things other than Hashem. That's called Hiluch de Lumazer, the walking towards other things that are not Hashem and having desire, wanting other things that are opposite of Hashem. And that, that the other side is called walking, is Shehoylech is Chazek, that it continues to grow. And like Rashi says that in the beginning, the, 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 the Eight Sahar the Umazer is like a guest, then eventually it walks and it continues to grow, and it becomes something permanent. Like also in Baba Kama, Meshalchei Regal Ashor Vachamor, the, the walking of the ox and the donkey, meaning that one has to watch and be meineh, to hold back the walking and the traveling and the growing of the Eight Sahar. And so to change, to be mahapich, to, to transform this walking in the side of, of negativity, to be, have hiluch belukus, to walk towards God through Ava, one has to first have a standing, a silencing of self. Bittel rotzen. Like we learned earlier that through Dafke Skafi you could then come to Ishapcha. So this stopping of oneself, of walking to the other side, this amida, this shtika, the silencing of self, of doing things that are strange, that are zorim, that are strange and not Hashem that's the meaning of the Krashem Oimdim that these heart vertical beams that stood and this Amida this standing in this bittel of Ratzin this being able to stand still from being drawn towards things of this world and nullifying one's will how does one do that? that's through Yira Oimdim Brum Oilam Amashmim Biyira and to come to Yira to be able to come to the year that's necessary to allow a person to stop traveling towards the other side is Avedis B'nai Mirari because to come to year one has to and this Amida one has to first have bitterness within one's soul when a person takes an accounting of all one's the days of one's life that Rubam Kakulam B'choshech Yelech that almost all of one's days is spent going in darkness and through the bitterness of this, the bitterness of how much one wastes one life. Through that one arouses Rachamim Rabim, divine compassion, to allow a person to come to Batal Ritzaincha to nullify one's will. And then when one stops and has bitterness and yira, and one stops being drawn after other things, mizen nimshach acherkach, through this is then drawn down the different levels of ahava, of love of Hashem and wanting Hashem. Because you stopped wanting other things, that allows you to want God in a way of kloisa nefesh, and this is the curtains, the yiriyos, of the different colors that were in the Mishkan. Because Tcheles, which you know one of the colors was Tcheles, is Lush and Kilyoin. Kolosh, Eri Lovavi, my, my flesh and my heart are consumed by the love of God. That's what Lush and Kilyoin means, to be consumed completely by passion for God. That's, that's represented by the curtains, the many colored curtains that were on the Mishkan. And the curtains, of course, were held up by the beams, which we learned as the Bittel Ratzin, nullifying one separate will. 
the beams of, of nullifying one's will to God, that's what allows the curtains of uh, the Uriah, of Avas Hashem, to be on a person. Just like in the physical body of a person, there are bones, and then there's flesh and tendons that are like w- up, upon that are like curtains on the bones. On a person's bones are the flesh and the tendons upon the bones. But it's the bones, the atzomas of, of the body that actually holds up the entire body. Which is why we say, that the bones should say it. What are the bones that make up one's spiritual body? That's the bitl rots and the nullifying of one's will. And that has to be in a person every single day. And that allows up the, these bones that hold up the body, meaning the nullifying of the will that holds up a person's aveda, allows a person to come to the flesh and tendons, which is avas Hashem, the, because flesh, we know, is comes from the side of fire. And tendons is the Indian of blood, and that's all connected to Ava. And all this was the Avaid of B'nai Gershon, meaning the, the Ava Sashem, that's the Avaid of B'nai Gershon, as he's going to explain why later. But now he goes on to Oiz Gimel, Hine Ba'avaid Sashem Betfila, this whole Indian of that we just spoke about in davening, this bit rotsen to be able to nullify one's will by davening, that comes through arousing yiratata, impsuka de zimra, and birchas yoitza, or when a person says over the year and the bitl of the angels. That inspires a person to come to Yira and then to come to the Hiluch, the traveling towards, movement towards God, which is Ava. That's through the Hizbonanus of, of, of Avas Oilam, of the Brach of Avas Oilam, and Shema Yisrael. As we know, Kabbalah says that Shema Yisrael is Heichel Ha'ava, the palace of Avas Hashem, and Shema Loshan Avana by understanding the Indian of Kriyashma, one comes to Avas Hashem. What's that his knows The Shema, what does one have to understand? One has to have Shema of Gidula Hashem. How all the worlds, including Gan El, all the levels of Gan Eden, Elyon, and Tachten, and also all that's going to be in the future, the seventh thousand, the seventh millennia, and so to Lasalavai, the fifty thousand Yevlis, fifty thousand times fifty years, which is going to be the future, the Lasalavai, fifty thousand Yevlis, all this, all the worlds, all these fifty thousand Yevlis, all of them by God, is like one thought before Atzmos. Like imagine you have one thought. That's what all of reality, all of time and space and everything before God is like one thought before Atzmusay. Like we find Chazal say, that Hashem looked until the end of all generations and that Tzoyfa, that looking, this Habata, is one thought vis-a-vis Hashem. Like it says in the Zoyer and the Medrash that with one thought Hashem created all the worlds. And just like by way of example by a person down here below that when you think thought is a lavush Lenefesh. We know thought is one of the garments, one of the lavushim of the soul. So too when it comes to Hashem. How much more so when it comes to Hashem? That Hashem's thoughts are not like ours. That it's even less even less one thought of ours compared to us, even less is one of Hashem's thoughts compared insignificant compared to Hashem. And this idea that Hashem has to enclose himself in a thought to bring about the whole eternity that's going to be in the future, that that's all one thought. One thought is one garment is a levush by Hashem. That's the meaning of Hashem Molach Geus Lavesh, that Hashem had to wear Geus, had to wear this Indian of being a Melech, of being a king, meaning that, that it came before God's thought to emanate and create all the worlds of Atzilus, B'Yitzir, and Asiya is in, in order for Hashem to be a king. This thought that Hashem wanted to be a king in all these worlds, it means that God wore a lavush. God put on a garment. Because it's not like a physical flesh and blood king. When a flesh and blood king has a thought and a desire to be king, so the servants are other people other than the king. There are zulas. There are others upon which the king could be king. And therefore it's possible to actually have a desire to rule over them. When it comes to Hashem, all the worlds are created from God's light itself. And therefore for Hashem to desire to want to rule over the worlds 
is just a garment because nothing really exists other than Hashem. So for Hashem to want to rule over all worlds is a lavush, is a garment that he encloses himself in this type of thought. He, Hashem molach geus lavesh, meaning that this first thought that arose before Hashem, that arose before Hashem of ona emloich, that I will be king, is only a garment to Hashem. It's only Hashem wearing something completely external, which is the deeper meaning of yaviu lavush malchus, that malchus is called a lavush. Asher lavash by Melech, the Malchus, that the light of Hashem that becomes the created reality is just a garment. But the meaning of Yaviu Levush Malchus, that we have to bring it, is because it's Bisrus Lasat, the Talia Milsa, that it depends on our awakening from below. To draw down that God should want to have this thought is through our keeping Torah Mitzvahs, which is the union of Mishkan, Veshachanti Betoicham, meaning the drawing down of Orin Sof, to be drawn down into this one thought, as we're going to learn more later on. And this is this Boinonos of Shema Yisrael, Havaya Lekenu. What does it mean, Havaya Lekenu? That Havaya becomes a Elikenu, Elikenu is tzimtzum, meaning that Havaya is enclosed, is mislabish in this thought to want to create all worlds. And then we say, because we then draw down this Malchus into the worlds of Bia as well. And through this is Bainus of Kriyashma, how all the worlds are just one thought before God. That causes, that draw, that arouses an Ahvahafta, love of Hashem, which are the curtains, generally, as we're going to learn more later on. And this idea that the year and the Ava cause each other, one causes the other one, is the meaning of Ratzi V'shoiv, the running and returning in a person. Ratzu is the Ava, the love that a person has to Hashem, and then the Shoiv of that is drawing down Orin Sof through Mitzvah Maisias, which are the 248 limbs of the king, Evar and the Malka. Just like limbs are vessels that have the revelation of the light and vitality of the soul, so to the Mitzvahs, having them draws down the Hashros Orin Sof, the Hashem's infinite light through the Mitzvahs, like we say Asher Kedishana B'mitzvah and then that then causes once doing the mitzvahs causes an awakening of Avarabah in a person's soul like we say Mashcheni Yecharecha Narutza draw me after you the mitzvahs cause that I get drawn after Hashem and I run after Hashem so there's Avas Oilam the, the lower level of Ava that's in Kriyashma that one has after one has Yira that's the Ratsui after the Shoiv. But then there's a Shoiv, then one comes to a higher level of Ratsui, which is the higher level of Ava, and then the Shoiv after that is the Yuri Lung keeping Torah Mitzvahs. And this is the Indian of B'nai Gershon that they carried the curtains of the Mishkan, the Uriyos, meaning that they draw down the Ava Rabba, the great love of Hashem through Kiyam Mitzvahs, into the Avas Oilam, which is the Rotsi that comes before the Shoiv. Meaning that the Ava Rabba is the higher Rot, in other words, the Shoiv, Yer Tata, then the Rotsi of Ava, then the Shoiv of keeping Mitzvahs, which then elicits a higher Rotsi of running towards Hashem of Ava Rabba. Nimtza comes out according to all of this. We're going to Daf Chafal the last the pa- last paragraph of of Ois Gimel. The Avoid of Bnei Merari that carried the Krushim Atzi Shitem Oidim. That's Yer Tata that brings about the standing still and the nullification of one's desire. That that's Bnei Merari. Then Bnei Gershon, the carriers of the curtains, is the connecting Ava. The two types of Ava, Avas Oilam Ba'Avarabba, which he doesn't sp- explain at great length over here in this Mimer. What are the difference between these two types of Ava? But it's explained in. Tanya, Perak Mem Gimel Mem Dalad. And the Avoid of Bnei Kahos, that they carried the Oroin and the, Miz, the Mizbachos, meaning the Kalim, the vessels, that's Yiri Law, which is also above Avarabba. Of course, the Yud of Hashem's name, that's Yiri Law, the higher level Yir, which is Bittel B'Metzias. And that's the Indian of the Oron, because what was in the Oron was the, the Luchos, were hidden the Luchos. Which brings about the deepest revelation from the depth of Hashem, Amka Machshavei Secha, <clears throat> and then revealing that what the Aaron draw down in the world in a more revealed way is the menorah, which of course is the Indian of a Torah or that this light is drawn from concealment of Yashas Chayshech Sisrei, the essential darkness of Hashem, to be able to bring about this light. That's the Aaron and the menorah. And then we know is Biriru that when one has the bittel of Chachma, then one is able to be Mivar Birurim. Chachma is the Nin of Yiri Law, then one could do Birurim. Because all of Toyer is about Mivar Birurim making refining the world, which is the Indian of the Mizb- Mizbachis, the altars. The Mizbachis also was about Birurim. 
separations and cleaning out things of this world, like bringing the sacrifices on the Mizbeach, and this was the carrying of Bnei Kahos. Like it says by Mashiach, V'lo yikas amim, yiskan shonamamaya, that all nations will go to Mashiach, they'll be drawn in, and that's the meaning of Birurim, Kahos is yiskan shon, yikas amim, drawn in. Birurim is also to draw in all the sparks, to refine the sparks from within, to separate them from the, from things that, that are negative. And through this this chachma, one comes to Yiri law. As we know, imen yira, in chachma, imen chachma, in yira. That first there has to be yira tata, because if there's no yira tata, one can't come to the bittel of chachma, and that's the krushim, the yira tata. Then we say, imen chachma, in yira law. Without chachma, you can't come to yira law. In order to get to yira law, is dafku through Torah, which is machachma nafkas, and therefore bnei kahas is yira law that comes after avaraba, and that's the, the union of yira law. After Avarab is the union of Shmona Esrei after the Vahaft of Kriyashmah.